Okay, so now we are to the third talk of this uh, uh, session, and uh, uh, it's Professor Dong Jun Ham, professor at the Calcast Graduate School of Converging Science and Technology and Department in Chemical and Biological Engineering at uh, the uh, uh, Korea University and president of the president of the Korean Society for Nanomedicine in Seoul, and he will be talking about the first story of an OLED molecule in the realm of biological work. Looking okay, forward. thank you, Chairman, for the detailed introduction of my. And they, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about my initial effort to to have a OLED molecule. Uh, uh, acquire new application in the recognition of the biological materials, right? Uh, so, uh, as you well know, since there is a you know a material uh, science division, the, the ALQ3 is uh, originally investigated by Tang on uh, Van Slide around you know three decades ago, and uh, here you know they. Uh, have discovered the electroluminescence when the, uh, this ALQ3, thin films of ALQ3 has been sandwiched uh, between two electrodes. And uh, as you well know, you know, we are, you know, we have observed the enormous uh, development of OLED based uh, displays and uh, lighting panels. And I'm not going to talk about these devices, but I'm going to, you know, pioneer how to, you know, liaison this you know, already commercialized molecule into the application of biology, right? So the, uh, there has been, you know, many uh, attempts uh, to inc uh, involve biological materials into the electronic devices. And uh, this is one example that about a decade ago, uh, uh, this uh, researchers uh, inserted the uh, thin films of double helix uh, uh, DNA films between the uh, gate and the source and drain electrodes. And they acquire some, you know, uh, reasonable uh, uh, IV curve. And uh, the property they have utilized is like this, you know. This is the, the, the view uh, of DNA, uh, physical properties DNA as a material. So the, as you increase the uh, length of the DNA, the refractive index goes on, but still lower than a PMMA. And once uh, have uh, forming uh, the duplex, uh, the, its thermal stability goes up to you know, more than uh, 250 degrees, so it's uh, pretty stable. You know, than expected, and uh, uh, you can see the some uh, properties of dielectric constant uh, uh, and a refractive index uh, ranging this uh, values. And uh, one peculiar uh, approach that I find interesting is uh, uh, reported by Dr. Stacker about a, a decade ago. And uh, in this uh, device, uh, they have inserted DNA thin films. Uh, in this case, they have extracted a double helix DNA uh, from the uh, salmon uh, spawn. And then they mix that with uh, the, the surfactant, and then you know they've uh, uh, inserted the films between the ordinary OLED device. And what they have uh, uh, acquired is the enormous increase in the uh, uh, brightness of both in the green and the blue light. And they explained that the reason is because the DNA has a higher LUMO. Uh, energy level so that the uh, the electron cannot escape so that you know the axon have a higher recombination which ends up with a uh, higher intensity in in light emission but uh, i find it's something missing they have never looked at into uh, the biological uh, biological uh, peculiar property which i think is the uh, recognition no one has done it so why not i volunteered no one objected so far. So I volunteer to look into uh, uh, this uh, phenomenon, uh, whether we have any new finding uh, upon the biological recognition. So uh, I needed to uh, synthesize the particle first. So it's been done uh, about you know, six years ago, uh, or it's been already eight, year, eight years ago uh, by uh, the uh, 
Chinese uh, scientist uh, Li, and he has utilized the surfactant, an ionic and cationic surfactants, and uh, was able to synthesize either raw type or the plate type depending on the choice of the surfactant. And he analyzed the uh, PL intensity regarding, uh, with respect to the shape of the particles. And my idea is uh, like this. This uh, figure uh, show, a schematic shows the regular, you know, or, or no conventional way of producing the uh, particles uh, of organic, uh, organic semiconductor mo molecules. But I removed the surfactant. Instead, uh, I uh, uh, inserted a uh, single strand DNA and was able to uh, synthesize similar shaped uh, particles. And uh, the difference is we have. Uh, DNA also uh, uh, located inner particle as well as the surface of particle. So from now on, I'm going to talk about this phenomenon as a DNA doping, whether or not you agree or not, right? So uh, uh, when we have a DNA, we have a crystal, but the crystal uh, uh, property is a little bit changed, but it is a really a, you know single crystal. And uh, I exposed this uh, uh, synthesized uh, new crystal uh, exposed to the uh, target uh, DNA. And this is what we got uh, from the uh, CCD camera. And uh, after the exposed to the specific DNA interaction, there is a enormous increase in the light emission, but the shape is similar. So I continue to do some more quantitative analysis. So this is the PL intensity uh, before the uh, interaction with the D uh, target DNA. After we have uh, about you know 70% increase in the PL intensity. What is more interesting is we have the uh, negligible increase when we have just one more mismatch in target DNA. So we couldn't stop. We have to know the reason why. So first uh, study I have I have looked in was a diffraction and uh, the SEM. So uh, this is the diffraction you know, spectrum. And uh, as you look here, the initial one and the single uh, one more mismatch one uh, is more like a similar spectrum. But you know, if you have a specific interaction with target DNA, we have a you know, distinct two peaks in diffraction pattern, and which I we identify that is the formation of the duplex DNA. So the increase of the PL is due to the formation of the duplex from this experiment. And uh, I'd like to know why formation of duplex can increase the PL of the uh, photoluminescence of the organic semiconductor particles. So we did some more detailed study. Okay, this is the TEM image of uh, the uh, uh, ARQ3 uh, particles uh, before and after the exposed to the uh, tar uh, specific target. And uh, before, initially, it looks quite uh, smooth. And then after the interaction, you, know, you will see some, you know, very crust, thin crust layer uh, at the pr uh, peripheral. Uh, region of the particle of which thickness is about 100 nanometers, something like that. So we did some more, you know, increase. So uh, the uh, high resolution uh, TEM shows that there are some uh, roughness, but after the reaction, it's really roughened. So is that really because of the existence of the uh, DNA? I like to see where are my DNAs. So this is it. So the probe uh, DNA is not like the uh, surfactant. It does help the crystallization, but the distribution is quite different. And uh, if you do some you know, quantitative analysis, then you, uh, you, using the confocal, you see the, the, the DNAs are co uh, concentrated in the, in the center, also on the surface of the particle. And where are my target? Target only locates at the surface, not in the center. Right, so we did. Uh, and uh, we did some uh, confocal you know, uh, analysis that the increased light only limited to the crust layer, which is a surface crust layer. Uh, so as you compare over this, uh, compared to the uh, uh, surface and the, uh, uh, the PL from the, uh, the 200 nanometer underneath the surface is doubled. All right, so uh, we conclude that you know, the formation of the double hallux at the surface of the crystals are the main reason, and we did some more you know, spectroscopical analysis, and uh, the formation of uh, the duplex 
uh, is really helping uh, organic semiconductor molecules to fluorescence a lot efficiently. Right. So the conclusion is uh, we have achieved uh, the first report regarding direct response of an OL leading molecule to biological specificity. So what's next is uh, coming soon. I think it, it's my imagination. Biofunctional, the first biofunctional OLED device in the near future. So design can be like this, you know. So we have cathode and uh, you know anode. Uh, there can be some you know uh, layers uh, which can help you know electron transport or the whole transport. And uh, we locate our you know biospecific emitting layer uh, uh, within two electrodes. And the uh, the doping cannot uh, uh, doesn't necessarily be limited to DNA. It can be a peptide or aptamers or other small molecules. And the uh, when we have an access of the, uh, uh, the viruses or proteins of uh, volatile organic compounds, then you know we may end up with the uh, biofunctional OLED in the future. And my acknowledgement goes to the uh, Dr. Ch uh, Chu Chui, uh, who is now uh, uh, become a, a professor in China, and my students uh, who devoted themselves to get you know detailed diffraction and microscopic analysis and profiling analysis. Okay, thank you very much. Very good. So uh, the paper is open for discussion. Any question, comment? Yes, Professor Hoffman. Yeah, thank you very much for your very interesting talk. I have a question to the uh, growth mechanism of your particle. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because you have the DNA inside, so we observe this also by controlled agglomeration. That means you have a primary particle which aligns to a large particle then. So you have the same thing here, because I'm not sure that we have single crystals. Right, uh, that's very fundamental uh, question, and uh, it is it's really the necessary, necessary question, I understand. So, you know, uh, st frankly to say, uh, at present, I do not know how the DNA molecules and the ALQ3 molecules really arrange themselves, I, and I have no information. But what I know is uh, from the diffraction pattern, uh, without the uh, uh, DNA and with DNA, we have uh, DNA molecules, uh, you know, inducing the pi pi stacking of the ALQ3 molecules, but in a different direction. So packing is in the direction of zero one zero, which is different from the, uh, when we use the surfactants. But what is different is we have uh, we have DNA molecules within the particle, not like you know uh, the conventional surfactants. So that is the uh, knowledge I have acquired so far. But I will dig into the detailed information in the near future. Yeah, thank you. Right. Any other? Question, comment? Yeah, I, I, I have one. Um, I mean, um, um, do you think also to uh, use this structure in a um, light emitting transistor kind of device? Okay, very uh, good question. And uh, okay, uh, the, uh, the contents I presented today is regarding microparticles, right? And you cannot use the microparticles in the application of light emitting, emitting devices. So the first step is to synthesize the nanometer scale <coughs> nanoparticles with DNA doped. So recently we <laughs> achieved that result in the scale of uh, 20 to 30 nanometers, which I haven't showed here, but you know, so that we did some preliminary result, uh, uh, having uh, some you know uh, uh, basic uh, cathode, anode, and uh, you know electron transport layer, even without the whole transport layer, and then we were able to uh, acquire the first uh, electroluminescence generating uh, from the device. So we will do more optimal. You know, optimization, and then uh, you will see within a year our our new results. Thank you. Very good. I think that in the interest of time, we should mo move on. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, um, the next talk will be given by.